Hello, hello, Mike there. Okay, come next, Madungan Manka. Thank you.
good morning uh, our consultants and our interns and clerks and for a sense already we can start the presentation for dr yambo thank you for dr Athena. um good morning doctors um and co-residents and pgis uh, i am dr yambo Today, I'm going to present a case on post-traumatic stress disorder. Child abuse happens when someone caring for a child creates a child feeling or body. It can happen to boys or girls in any family. Often, hurt feelings last long after a hurt body has healed. Ladies and gentlemen, join me as I present a case of post-traumatic stress disorder entitled hidden scars and bruises. Our objective for today's presentation is to present a case of patient with post-traumatic stress this disorder to develop depression and to discuss the management of post-traumatic stress disorder and depression and to discuss trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. For the identifying data, this is a case of Bravo, 17 year, years old, male, single, Filipino, high school level, student, born on June 19, 2005, and currently living in Toril, Davao City. The patient was seen for teleconsultation for the first time last February 14, 2022. With a chief complaint of insomnia, or from the patient's word, Diliko Makatulo. For the pre-morbid personality, Bravo described himself as loving and helpful person. He finds delight in helping someone who needs help. Being of service is his way of showing love to his family and friends. As a student, Bravo is responsible and diligent. He always does his best to excel in school as evidenced by his good grades. His friends describe him as a good leader and keen listener, someone you can depend on and count on in times of difficulty. He is also a cheerful and humorous person who often cracks jokes with his friends. However, when confronted with problems, he would rather keep things to himself since he thinks no one will understand him. Now, let's proceed with the history of present illness. 10 years prior to console, then seven-year-old Bravo met his biological father and his new family for the first time. This was also the time when he learned that the woman who had been taking of him ever since was not actually his biological mother, but his grandmother. Learning the truth about himself and his, his, his real family stunned and upset, upset at him. He was even more disappointed upon learning that he needs to leave his grandmother and live with his father and his new family. He was puzzled why he needs to be with his father when he was already okay living with his grandmother. In patients were nanduod ko ni Lola, nganong kailangan ko niya, ihatag kay Papa. Initially, Bravo had a good relationship with his father and stepmother. However, after a few weeks, her stepmother turned strict and verbally abusive towards him. Wala mang kay pulos dom. His stepmother would complain about him not helping in household chores like cleaning the house, washing dishes, and taking care of pets. Taking care of pets. Whenever he failed to do tasks assigned to him, he would receive corporal punishment from his stepmother. His stepmother would beat him with a stick or a wire and would force him to kneel on soul for a period of time. During this time, Bravo would just stay in the corner and silently cry. He would not complain out of fear that he'd be beaten more by his stepmother. Because of this, he started to isolate himself and would not interact with his stepmother and stepbrother. One time, while Bravo was playing with his younger stepbrother, 
he accidentally destroyed his brother's toy. Seeing what, ha what happened, his stepmother yelled at him angrily. She sucked him and hung him on a tree for an hour. He cried and pleaded to her as he was helpless at that time. Bravo's relationship with his father doesn't offer any consolation to him. His father became fancy, especially when his stepmother would complain about his shortcomings. Like his stepmother, became verbally abusive, constantly verbal attacks. In the end, dream, Babu endured all up by his father and stepmother. There were times that he wanted to go back to his grandmother. However, he didn't find the courage to do so. Praying what his father will do to him and greet his father and avoid any arguments with him and his stepmother. Eight years by his father to work overseas. He was left with no choice but to stay with his stepmother and stepbrother. Clock in the morning to clean their peg pen and guard them. His stepmother became stricter and more abusive towards him. A lot of times, he goes to school with no allowance. There were also times wherein he would cut classes and beg money and beg for money from people to feed his empty stomach. When Bravo got overwhelmed, overwhelmed and oversaturated by problems, he left their house and went back to live with his, with his grandmother. Despite all of the difficulties that he had been through, Baba continued his schooling and was able to maintain passing grades in his school. Five years prior to consul, when he was 12 years old, his father came back from abroad. Baba's father asked for his forgiveness and convinced him to go back to their house and live with him. Babo gave in to his request when he learned that the stepmother was no longer staying with his father. In his heart, the hope of starting a better life with his father rekindled. But then, as soon as he went back living with his father, things went into negative direction. He observed that his father seemed to worsen as he now engages in drinking and gambling and always goes home drunk. He would hear his father's disappointments and would often displace his anger on him. He again became physically and verbally abusive towards his son, saying, Wala kay pulos na bata, while beating him. One time, his father went home drunk and was mad at him for a known reason. The father punched him on his face and stabbed his hand with a knife, causing a profuse bleeding from his wound. In the interim, Bravo continued to receive verbal and physical maltreatment from his father. There were no days wherein he would not be punched or slapped by his father. Whenever he goes to school, he would usually wear, wear, wear jackets to cover his uses, and there were times when he skipped school to hide his swollen lips and face. Even, was, even when Bravo was in school, there were episodes when, wherein he would have intrusive thoughts of the physical maltreatment by his father. Whenever he goes home and sees their house, he would tremble in fear as he remembers his traumatic experience. Bravo avoids to have interaction with his father, especially when he was drunk. He would feel uneasy when he was around and always on the lookout of. Baba started to feel sad and hopeless most of the time. 
There were times he thought of ending his life. Unta, mamatay na lang ako. Ganong dili pa man ko niya pa chong. Eventually, Baba started to lose interest in going to school and could not focus on his studies. Four years prior to consultation, Bravo, who was 13 years old during this time, was left by his father because the latter needs to work in the hall. As a result, he lived alone in their house and was forced to stand on his own. However, balancing his studies and responsibilities at home, such as cleaning, preparing his food, and taking care of the pets, proved to be a lot difficult for him to handle. He felt sad about his, about his living condition. Upon waking up in the morning, he would feel so tired and unenergized. He spends extra time laying on his bed, which led him to be tardy in school. There was a persistent loss of interest in going to school and difficulty concentrating on his study. In effect, he had poor performance and grades in school. He started to withdraw from his social circle and preferred to be alone. At night, he could not sleep and would ruminate about his situation. He wondered why these things are happening to him. Sige na lamang kubyaan kung sa may mali na ako. He often asked himself. He started to think that something was wrong with him and felt more hopeless about his condition. To cope with his loneliness, Babu would often visit his friends in Cousins. He started to smoke and drink alcohol with his friends. He would drink alcohol in order to forget his problems and be able to sleep. One time, Babu was invited by his friend to a drinking session and was introduced to a homosexual individual. He got drunk, um, he got drunk up until the point of intoxication wherein he felt very dizzy and weak that he cannot stand without the help of others. He almost passed out and cannot recall everything that had happened. What he can remember was he was forced to do, to do some sexual acts and penetration of his anal area. When he gained consciousness, Bravo was only wearing his grip and felt some pain in his anal area. He, re he realized that he was sexually molested. Learning that this happened to him, Babu began to think that he was dirty and unworthy of respect. He felt degraded and sad about what happened, but decided to keep it to himself out of shame. Whenever he was alone, Babu would have recurrent thoughts of the traumatic event wherein he would feel sadder and had an angry burst towards himself. Maglagot ko sa hay, hindi makahinulong ko sa nahita ko. He started to avoid his friends and, avoid, and did avoid drinking alcohol. His experience also made him fight them and avoid gay people when he sees them on the street. Every time he sees a gay, in, gay in the, uh, a homosexual individual, he would experience pounding heart with an uh, entembling In the interim, Bravo continued to live his life despite feeling miserable and unhappy. He felt so lonely for living all by himself. Whenever he cannot sleep, he would ask himself, what is his purpose in life? One time, Bravo celebrated his birthday all by himself. None of his family and relatives remembered him on his special day. He felt sad that no one from his family, uh, the thought of being a lovable and failure lingered in his mind. Bravo then recalled everything that had happened to him, the physical abuse of his father and stepmother, his performance in school, and the sexual molestation. He started to think that his life is pointless and, hope and useless. He felt to be more hopeless about his situation. He wanted to end his life. He tried hanging himself to end his suffering, but was unsuccessful in his attempt to do so. A few months after his birthday, Bravo was 14 years old during that time. His father arrived from Bohol with his new live-in partner. 
At first, he enjoyed a good, a good relationship with his father. However, as the week passed by, his father would again go home drunk, leading to their frequent misunderstanding and argument. As a result, he received several punches and slaps from his father, causing him to have bruises all over his body. Bravo found himself using jacket and sunglasses again to hide the black eyes and bruises from his classmates. But what, but what was more hurtful for him was, was the verbal attack made by his father. Wala kay man pulos kang bataa. This cemented the idea that he was unlovable and a failure. Due to frequent misunderstandings and worsening treatment of his father, Babo was personally evicted from their house and transferred to his own floor. The years prior to consulting, Bravo stayed with his aunt who happened to be his father's sister. At that time, there was improvement in Bravo's condition because he was able to focus on his studies. However, there was persistent feeling of sadness and interrupted sleep. But like a bad dream, things seemed to go in the wrong way again. Only this time with his aunt Flora. His aunt started to be verbally aggressive towards him, leading him to feel sadder. He also started to experience chest tightness, associated with numbness of extremities and difficulty of breathing whenever he was at home with his aunt. There was one time where Inbrava accidentally broke his aunt's favorite drinking glass. His aunt was so mad that she slapped him, causing his face and lips and lips to swell. Blood came out from his lips and mouth and made him speechless. His aunt was unfazed by the sight of him bleeding and continued to pound his chest several times. Instead of fighting back, Bravo escaped from his other his aunt's house out of fear. At that time, Bravo felt that he was unlovable and no one loves him. He asked himself. He was forced to transfer from one relative to another just to avoid her abusive aunt. Unfortunately, there was one time when his aunt Flora saw him. She slapped and punched him in the face many times. He developed hematoma on his face and upper extremities. His aunt stopped harassing him when he threatened her of filing a child abuse against her. One year prior to consultation, their pastor learned about his situation. Bravo was offered to stay in their house. Bravo chose to stay with their pastor and was able to work as, a, to work as an assistant in their pet shop business. Though he was away from his father and aunt, there were times wherein he would have recurrent involuntary recall of the punches and slap he received from both of them, which often led him to develop feelings of anger and fear. Even in his dreams, painful memories would appeal, leading him to have interrupted in his sleep. As a result, Babu would consciously avoid to remember or talk about the traumatic event. In the interim, there was still persistence of feeling sad associated with episodes of interrupted sleep and difficulty concentration. Five months prior to consultation, Baba had difficulty in one of his subjects in school. He started worrying and was unable to concentrate on his studies. His difficulty in sleeping worsened to the extent that he cannot sleep at night at all. There were episodes when he would feel chest tightness Accompanied by difficulty of breathing, coffee sitting, and numbness of semi-space, especially every time he, think, he thinks of his subject. In the interim, there was a persistence of the above symptoms. No consultation was done. A day prior to the consultation, Bravo was attending a mass when he suddenly had chest tightness associated with palpitation, difficulty of breathing, coffee sitting, and numbness of extremities. He was brought to a local hospital and laboratories were done, which revealed normal finding. He was then advised to seek consultation for further evaluation in our institution. For the past psychiatric history, um, this is Bravo's first consultation in his PLC ITVM. He had no previous psychiatric consultations in other institutions. 
no history of societal ideation or attempt or attempt was reported. But there was actually the, there was a there was a history of societal ideation or attempt was reported. Uh, for the medical history, uh, Bravo had no history of hypertension, head trauma, seizures, uh, bronchial asthma, or thyroid disease. No known food and drug allergies, no history of previous surgeries. For the, uh, no, for the family psychiatric history, um, the patient father has history of alcohol, alcohol use. For the family medical history, there is a history of hypertension on paternal side and a history of diabetes on maternal side. For the family psychodynamics, uh, Bravo's parents met in a local public school in Kalina, Davao City. They were high school classmates that became a couple after a year. Bravo's mother got pregnant after they graduated from high school. Initially, they lived together but parted a ways a few months after giving birth to him. Bravo was just four, month, four months old when he was left under the care of his grandmother. Growing up, Bravo thought that his grandmother was his real mother. He had no idea that he was not her biological son. He remembers having a warm relationship with her, with her grandmother, grandmother, though she was busy most of the time making ends meet. Whenever his grandmother was away for work, his older cousins take turns in take her, taking care of him. Bravo was around seven years old when he, met, when he met his father. Growing up, Bravo was not close to his father and described him as straight. There are frequent arguments that often lead to physical altercation. Moreover, they, they never had bonding moments because his, his father was busy working to make their ends meet. Furthermore, Bravo was often left with his stepmother at home. He described his stepmother as rude and frequently asked him to do things that make his life difficult, such as cleaning their piggery, washing their dishes, and cleaning their house. If Bravo failed to do his obligation, he would often receive harsh comments from his stepmother. When Bravo's father evicted him from their house, he transferred to his aunt's floor, who happened to be his father's sister. Bravo's relationship with his aunt floor was not also good. He was physically and verbally tortured by his aunt, causing him to feel unlovable and worthless. When the physical abuse became worse, Bravo left his aunt's house. Currently, Bravo is living with his pastor and his family. At first, he felt uncomfortable, but later on, when he became close to his pastor, he described him to be caring and loving. He was, he was treated like his own child. Bravo also enjoys a good relationship with the pastor's wife. He described her as someone support, so as someone as someone supportive and loving. Um, there were times when he would seek guidance and advice from her whenever he is confused and lost. Furthermore, uh, Bravo claimed to share a warm relationship with a couple's children. They, use, they would usually watch television and play basketball that ball as their bonding activity. He was comfortable with them because he was treated like family. Now let's proceed with the prenatal and perinatal history. Um, Bravo was born out of bad luck. He was born full term from a seven year old gravidan one para one mother via a normal spontaneous delivery assisted by a traditional birth attendant at home. No reported feto maternal complications during labor and delivery. Bravo was unplanned but wanted pregnancy. According to the grandmother, his parents were both teenagers when his mother got pregnant. Both parents were not prepared to take their parental role, which resulted to their frequent argument. Bravo's mother was the primary caregiver during his first four months of life for him he was best kid. He allegedly had an affair with another, another man and Bravo was left unattended 
causing him to become sickly. The couple decided to separate ways and Baba was left under the care of his grandmother. Baba's developmental milestones were at par with her, with her, with his age. For the peaceful history, um, Baba grew up under the care of his grandmother. The grandmother served as a father and a mother to Bravo. His grandmother worked as a janitress in a nearby school. Whenever she would be out of work, Bravo would be left on a would be would be left under the care of his younger cousin. Whenever his grandmother arrived from work, the grandmother would usually, would usually look for him and would often be reminded to stay home. Bravo would describe his grandmother to be loving but strict. He would always be reminded to stay and do some house trips and focus on his studies. However, there were times that he would sneak out to play with his neighbors and cousins. As a result, Babu would receive corporal punishment from his grandmother, wherein he would be beaten by a stick. Babu sees this punishment as a normal thing for any child. He believed that children should be disciplined by their guardians. At that time, Bravo was not aware that his grandmother was not his real biological parent. He was made, uh, he was made to believe that his grandmother was his biological mother. One time, while he was playing with his cousins, Bravo had had a misunderstanding with one of them wherein he was bullied. As a result, he got mad and punched his cousin. Bravo never dared to assist his grandmother if she, if she was if she was her biological mother or not. He preferred to keep this to himself. Though he was hurt by being bullied as Ampon, Babu preferred to keep it to himself. For the middle child history, Baba started to go to school when he was six years old. At school, he was observed to be friendly and cooperative. During their class, he was participative and usually be active in joining extracurricular activities. Though he was not an honor student, Bravo was focused on his studies. He was not involved in any fights or misconducts. However, there were days that he cannot attend his class because of financial problems, and sometimes he needed to be absent to beg for money from others. But despite all the hardship, Bravo was still being, was able to pass his to pass all his subjects. For the late childhood history, Bravo proceeded immediately to high school after graduating in elementary grade. He was focused on his studies and tried to pass all subjects. He was active both in academic and extra extracurricular activities in his school. He was active in joining academic, academic clubs, academic clubs and scout team. Bravo has few friends in school and would hang out with them after class. He was described by his friends to be friendly and helpful and someone you can depend on. Whenever he's proud, his friends have personal problems, they believe that Bravo has the heart to help and he has to listen to their problems. Moreover, Bravo was kind to be diligent and hardworking by his classmates. He would usually lead the group and help them finish their group tasks. For the social history, Bravo would hang out with his friends during his free time. At times, he would play basketball with them. However, Bravo limits his time playing because he needs to go home early. For the occupational history, after he was adopted by his pastor, Bravo was hired as an assistant, as an assistant in the bath house. He had good good relationship with his coworkers. For the sexual and relationship history, Bravo identifies himself as male and is attracted only to the opposite sex. When he was 14 years old, Bravo had one romantic relationship and their relationship lasted uh, for seven months. He broke up with his girlfriend because of their long distance relationship. The frequent cause of their argument was his failure to reply on his girlfriend's inquiry. For the religious background, um, Bravo was brought up as a Protestant. When he was young, his grandmother His grandmother would always bring him to the church to always find go to the church. For the legal and military history, Bravo has no history of incarceration. He had no record of any cases filed against him, nor did he file against another person. He 
class, no history of involvement in the military, and he has never been deployed in the military. For the hopes and dreams, Bravo hopes to finish his studies. He believed that when he will have a college degree, that would be the only time that his family will value him. For the substance use history, uh, uh, what, what is pertinent is that he was able to use alcohol. He started using alcohol at the age of 18 due to blood pressure, but he did no continued use as of the moment. Uh, the amount cannot be called, and the last use cannot be called. For the non substance use history, Babo denies I does not gamble nor engages in computer game. So, any questions for regarding my history? Moving on. Uh, for the psychiatric review system, what is pertinent is for the depressive symptoms. This uh, sorry, Meko, naka mute pala ako. Um, sino other informant mo, Meko, for this case? Yung patient ko do alone. You had no Ito. other informants. Wala ko do. Ah, okay. Um, uh, bakit hindi ka nakakuha ng other informants? <laughs> Um, ano po kasi, Doc, um, the patient is ano, living with his, with the pastor, he pas, with the pastor po, Doc, then hindi ko po na-contact yung, yung grandmother and the father po, Doc. Uh, but did you attempt to do so also? I did not na din po, Doc, kasi ano pa si, um, because of the, Yung mga matna-receive niya doon, parang gina, the stay away na din siya doon sa kanyang, sa kanyang father. Then malayo kasi, nasa Turil na kasi siya ngayon doc. The patient is currently in Turil and his, uh, his father is in, somewhere in Kalinan po doc. Mm -hmm. So who advised him to seek consultation? Was it the hospital? Yung doctor po doc. Okay, but was there a referral? None for Okay. Kasi we want to clarify a lot of things, no? Although, yes, um, in cases such as this, uh, you can have just the patient as the as your other as your only informant. But you know, considering there's history of abuse and all of that, um was he reported to WCPU as well? Okay. Should we... I asked yeah. the patient for a doc, then wala daw po a doc. And, and I also asked if he has, ano ka nang, ka nang, is planning to do, to file a case. Dili daw po a doc. He's not but he's 17 to... also, right? Apo a doc. Okay, so what are our responsibilities as physicians when you do encounter cases wherein you are suspecting, or in this case, the patient himself divulged abuse? We can report it to the authority for the, which I feel to do. Okay. So, how? How would you report it to the authorities as well? We can ask the help of the social worker for the, and the social worker for the... Sige. I will look na, I will ask further questions na lang later regarding your management. Huh? Because okay. this is important, like what were your referrals as well, no? Because yeah, okay, it's so it's one thing if the patient does not want to pursue anything, but on your end, what should have been the steps that you should have done? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you for the. Now let's proceed with the mental status examination. Uh, for the general appearance, Babo was well groomed, wearing a casual black shirt, and he looked tired and sat with stiff posture. He keeps on looking down with a sad, down the downcast gaze. He would only look to the interviewer when he was being asked or needed to answer questions. He was calm and cooperative. He follows the command and answers questions when asked. 
for the mood and affect, patient was sad and worried, he verbalized malungkot o gulupo, o dili, nga dili ko makatulog. Affect was mood from you well. For the new vegetative function, for the sleep, he has needs insomnia, for the appetite, he has decreased appetite, and for the weight, there is the presence of weight loss. During ovulation, he is more active in the afternoon and no change in him. For for the attention, he has good attention. For the speech, Prabhu spoke spontaneously in low tone with decreased weight and volume. He was fluent in Visaya. For the perception, um, he did like auditory, visual, visatory, tactile, and olfactory hallucination. For the thought process, um, the thought process was linear. For the quantum, then no suicidal and homicidal ideation. For the sensorium and cognition, uh, he is oriented to his fears. The patient was able to identify himself. He when asked what time today and where he was, he was the patient was able to answer correctly. He had an impaired immediate result and remote memory. For the concentration and attention, patient uh, patient was able to do serial subtraction and able to stop vascular buffer. For the upset thought, uh, patient was. Uh, able to explain the meaning of saying time is gold and patient has a good fund of knowledge. He was able to name five former presidents of our country. Patient had unpaired social and tough judgment and has been partial insight. For the PE, um, vital signs were unremarkable, uh, but the patient has a BMI of 26.5, which is overweight. For the PE, an ball and the pineal nerve examination is also an ball. For the salient features, um, we are presented with a 17-year-old male, single, high school level student uh, with a premium history of not sharing his problem and with a pertinent history of physical abuse, verbal abuse, first uh, heavy household chairs, corporal punishment, um, sexually, wherein he was, has history of sexually molest, molestation, history of feeling depressed, feeling of hopelessness, history of cannot sleep or interrupted sleep, cannot focus or less embrace and studies, recurrent thoughts of traumatic events, history of nightmares, avoid to talk about the event, and episodes of fear and anger outbursts, and had episodes of chest tightness, difficulty breathing, probably stepping, numbness, and palpitation. With uh, an remarkable past psychiatric history, with a, uh, with a pertinent uh, family history of alcohol use, father history of alcohol use. For the personal history, um, patient was separated from his mother at young age, received physical and verbal maltreatment from his father and aunt. For the psychiatric review of system, uh, what is pertinent is the presence of the first mood, the third sleep, because appetite, loss of concentration, societal addiction, anxiety, and auditory hallucination. For the MSE, what is pertinent was that patient looked tired with stiff postures, with eye, eyes downcast, mood was sad, and with, with the uh, affect was congruent, uh, with no perceptual disturbances, denied societal and societal addiction. An impaired judgment and partial insight. For the differential diagnosis, we have for the mood, we have major depressive disorder and persistent depressive disorder. For the trauma and stress related, we have post traumatic stress disorder and adjustment disorder. For the anxiety disorder, we have the generalized anxiety disorder and panic disorder. For the major depressive disorder, we rule it in because the patient has depressed mood most of the day, nearly every day. He lost the drive to go to school. Patient had weight loss, has difficulty sleeping, has history of lost energy or drive to doing his usual activities, and he's going to focus on his studies. And that there was there were times when he wanted to end her, his life, and patient failed to feel. There is history of uh, no, failure in fulfilling his obligation in school, and the patient has no history of substance use or medical condition. And the occurrence of major depressive episode is not better explained by other psychiatric conditions. 
and there were no episodes of mania or hypomania. This is that depressive disorder was also ruled in because Brava has depressed mood most of the day, has difficulty sleeping, poor concentration, low self esteem, and low energy. Brava has never been without symptoms of depression for more than two months, and depressive symptoms were present for three years. And there were no episodes of me or, or hypomania, and they never met the criteria for cyclopenia. Brava had no known illness or had not used any substance or had medical condition that may continue to his, to his present illness. And his symptoms were severe enough causing significant decline in functionality. Post traumatic stress disorder has been ruled in because uh, he, uh, Bravo was sexually abused. Post traumatic disorder was ruled in because Bravo had directly experienced the traumatic event. He has recurrent, involuntary, and visited the testing memories of the traumatic event and has recurrent distressing dreams in which the content of the dreams are related to the dramatic event. Um, he had efforts to avoid people that were the reflection of the dramatic event. Bravo had angry outbursts and has problem with concentration and sleep disturbance. And the disturbance is more than one month and there's an impairment relationship and uh, the disturbance is not attributable to the effect of the substance. Adjustment disorder was also ruled in because Baba experienced mind distress, this impairment in functioning in this presence of the first team. However, we rule it out because the stance of the disturbance may be created for another mental disorder, and the symptom persists even in the absence of the stressors. Panic disorder was also ruled in because the patient had intense fear, he had palpitation, shortness of breath, sweating, and shaking. The disturbance is not attributable to the physical effects of the substance. However, it was ruled out because patient has no persistent concern or worry about additional panic attacks, no significant or adaptive changes in behavior related to the attacks. General anxiety was also ruled in because Bravo cannot concentrate in his studies, there's disturbance in her, on his sleep, and his symptoms were severe enough causing significant decline in functionality. Uh, however, it was ruled out because his worries of his patient lean, though his worries Though he worries, he can still control his worries, and Bravo's symptoms can be explained in another situation. Our impression for this case is persistent depressive disorder with intermittent major depressive disorder without current episode and post traumatic stress disorder with a CD10 of persistent mood disorder affective disorder. So, the biopsychosocial formulation. Um, So this is a case of Bravo, a 17-year-old male who developed post-traumatic disorder and depression after he got exposure to traumatic events. On the biological perspective, the patient has a clear evidence of a strong family history of psychiatric illness. The father almost always goes home drunk every day and give us the clue that he has a diagnosed depression, that the father has a diagnosed depression with me, which may also contribute to our patients' genetic predisposition. Uh, according to Sadak et al., children with a family history of major depression in a first degree relative are about three times more likely to develop depression than in those without family history of affective disorder. Also, a family history indicating a case of depressive disorder may predispose a trauma exposed child to develop PTSD. Moreover, Bravo repeat, repeated exposure to the traumatic events such as the repeated physical and verbal assault she received from his family caused, caused a long-term sexual and biological changes that resulted in dysregulation of internal signaling system and new transmitter system, particularly the division and the regulation of the norepinephrine and serotonin, which contributed to the pathophysiology of depression. So as explained by the Sadaq et al, the plus humans indicate that the history of early trauma is associated with increased HPA activity accompanied by sexual changes in the cerebral cortex. Furthermore, elevated HPA activity is a hallmark of mammalian stress response and one of the clearest links between depression and the biology of chronic stress. So in situation of chronic stress, excessive glucocorticoid release may eventually cause hippocampal atrophy and because the hippocampus in with HP 
HPA axis to be in this region, may lead to chronic activation of the HPA axis, which may increase risk of developing a psychiatric illness. Um, cortisol um, induces an increase in expression of gene coding for serotonin transporter, which cause elevation in the uptake of serotonin and affect the increased brain serotonin concentration, leading to depression and anxiety. Also, the repeated exposure to his stressor lead to prolonged activation of a circuit, a condition known as cell sensitization, wherein brain circuits become overly activated even in the absence of stressors. As discussed by Spall et al., stress sensitized circuits can make individuals vulnerable to future stressors. Moreover, Bravo's traumatic experiences deeply affected his brain. These traumatic experiences can overactivate can overactivate amygdala. Uh, for, uh, can over can over uh, so again these traumatic experiences can overactivate amygdala activate his amygdala, resulting in intense fear response, causing him to have intrusive thoughts which prevents him from sleeping or, night, or nightmares and flashbacks. Furthermore, the overactivated amygdala makes him to have difficulty in identifying the difference between a threat then and a threat now. This means that when he is reminded of a trauma event or experiences, the amygdala responds the exact same way it would if he was experiencing the trauma for the first time. This causes Bravo to be on high alert all of the time. Also, trauma can affect the hippocampus, which is responsible for his for store, storing and retrieving memories and differentiating between past and present experiences. Because of this, the old traumatic memories are placed at the forefront of Bravo's mind causing him to live a constant state of hypervigilance and intense emotional reactivity. Lastly, traumatic experience can decrease the function of our prefrontal cortex, which is responsible in regulating and interpreting our emotion, control in, controls our impulse and problem-solving skills. This task, Bravo, makes his logical thinking difficult, which in turn makes him incapable of controlling his fear. Indeed, living with traumatic stress can change the brain so much that daily life can feel like a challenge. Now let's proceed with the psychological aspect. So in self psychology, the self is understood to be the center of an individual psychological universe. If a child's developmental environment is appropriate, a healthy sense of self will typically develop and generally the individual will be able to maintain consistent patterns or experiences throughout life. When individuals are not able to develop a healthy sense of self, they may tend to rely on others in order to get needs met. In the early stages of individual's life, the individual is not capable of self-reflection or self-monitoring. For the helpless child to grow and develop healthy identity, it needs both reflection and monitoring to be provided from outside self. The use of affirming and positive responses of others helps the individual see the positive traits within themselves. Moreover, individuals, uh, moreover, individuals need people who make them feel calm and comfortable. Bravo was initially left under the care of his grandmother who showed him love and affection. The mirroring of loving, calm, and non-judgmental treatment of his grandmother promotes connections leading Bravo to feel safe and secure. This connection is necessary in order for Bravo to develop a healthy and strong sense of self. However, when he was seven years old, he was forcibly taken away from his grandmother. Bravo was taken care of his father and stepmother 
who were both verbally and physically abusive. Bravo's father and stepmother have failed to respond empathically to his marrying and idealizing Neil. As a result, Bravo received a non affirming and a negative treatment from both of him, which led Bravo to develop a low self, a poor self esteem. Furthermore, when Bravo was 13 years old, he was left by his father, which made him feel alone, unsafe, and insecure. Plus, the sexual molestation that he experienced. This even caused a blow to help, a blow to his self esteem, leading him to develop depression. Now let's proceed for the post-traumatic depression. Um, Bravo's early exposure to trauma is the initial etiological factor in the development of post-traumatic stress disorder. According to the, according to the learning theory, uh, individuals with PTSD have endured a strong form of classical conditioning causing the pathological disorder. So in classical conditioning, um, learning takes place when an association is formed between a previously neutral stimulus and a naturally appearing stimulus. So the traumatic event may act as an unconditioned stimulus, eliciting an, un eliciting an unconditioned response of extreme fear and anxiety. Um, Condition stimuli include cognitive, emotional, physiological, environmental cues associated with or related to the event. These dramatic reminders elicited condition response that were similar to those elicited by the event itself. In the case of Bravo, the condition stimulus was the physical and verbal maltreatment of his young father, which evoked unconditioned response characterized by extreme fear. Every time that Bravo sees his father smoke the alcohol, this evoked condition response of fear. This is because Bravo associates the needle stimuli to the traumatic event, evoking him to a fearful response. On the other hand, operant conditioning can also be applied in this case. And operant conditioning associations are made between a behavior and the consequences of that behavior. When a behavior leads to a desirable consequence, consequence it becomes more likely that the behavior will be repeated again in the future. If the actions lead to a negative outcome, however, then the behavior becomes less likely to occur. Bravo avoids his father in attempt to prevent or remove the unpleasant feelings of fear, and the behavior is avoidant. The Bravo's avoidance is highly reinforcing and is likely to occur repeatedly because it removes or diminishes unpleasant feelings and memories, making such behavior rewarding and further reinforcing this behavior to real growth. For the, for the social aspect, of, we see parental verbal abuse in childhood and related verbal abuse in adolescence have been associated with the risk of depressive mood, anxiety, dissociation, or drug use in, adult, in young adults. Adults who were verbally abused as children have 1.6 times as many symptoms of depression and anxiety than those not verbally abused and were twice as likely to have suffered a mood or anxiety disorder during their lifetime. Anxiety and mood disorders, such as depression, are more prevalent in lower than higher socioeconomic groups. In our case, Babo belongs to a lower so socioeconomic group and have received verbal and physical abuse from parents. So to address the biological aspect of, the, of this patient, I plan, I start the patient with citofluoxacin, 10 milligram, one stop, one stick. Hello, Malcolm. Can we go back to your biopsychosocial? Let's put the your table on biopsychosocial. Uh, bio, no, no. Yung pinaka after the yan. Okay, so uh, sa social relationship, lack of parental support, abusive, and then for precipitating all these sad experiences, poor family support, supportive, protective. Let me just ano ha, go through this kasi gina-flash mo lang kasi hindi ko masyado mabasa. Sorry, I need time. Okay. 
Okay, I, I will reserve my questions later when you're discussing okay. treatment. Thank you, Padma. Will so you be discussing Dr. also Dr. his alcoholism? Sorry, will you be discussing the dynamics of his alcoholism? Of his, of his father, Padok. Uh, isn't this patient drinking? Um, na, not ano, not na molest out, na rape ng gay person? Um, yes, for the, um, um, the patient stopped drinking alcohol na po. Uh, sige lang. Later na lang. No, no more, ano. When was the last time he drank alcohol? I cannot recall na po, doc. Ah, uh, okay. Kasi I did not see that in your biopsychosocial, the episode of alcoholism. Sige na lang. Continue. Thank you for the um, for the to address the biological aspect of this patient. I started the patient with a city from one half tub once daily in the morning for four days, then increased to one tub at once daily after. Um, a city from according to the study in clinical practice guidelines for the management of depression in children and adolescents in general journal of psychiatry. A city from has been evaluated in children age 12 or more and has been reported to be efficacious and safe. Among the various antidepressants, the FDA of, US, uh, of the United States has approved the use of loxetin in children age 8 years old or above and the use of acetylopram in children age 12 years or above. Um, Floxetin and acetylopram have put in drug administration approval in the treatment of major depression in the adolescent. That is all according from the Kaplan. SADA, diagnosis of psychiatry. Starting doses of SSRI for pre-marital children are lower than those recommended for adults, and adolescents are generally bred for the same doses recommended for adults. Also, SSRI is the first choice for target anxiety and the only symptom of PTSD, which improves so, uh, it can improve social and creational functioning and individual perception and improved quality of life. So, this is according from the study. A post traumatic stress disorder in children and um, For the psychological aspect, uh, um, the therapy should provide mirroring and idealization um, to this patient to improve his self esteem. Also, a trauma focused psychotherapy should be done for this patient. So, the trauma focused therapy uh, it directly addresses memories of the traumatic event or thoughts and feelings related to the traumatic event. So, it focuses not only on the symptom improvement. But also in enhancing functioning, resili resiliency, and or developmental trajectory. So the components of trauma focused therapy is psychoeducation, uh, wherein we start to educate the patient regarding the, the nature of typical emotional and physi physiological reaction to traumatic events. Also for the parenting skills, um, uh, we guide the parents on providing space. If that is not uh, in this case, the patient parents are not available. So the pastor who adopted the patient will be provide will be guided by provide uh, on how to provide ways administering time out. Also, relaxation is included wherein we teach the our patient to utilize muscle relaxation, focus breathing, affective modulation, um, affective expression, and and modulation is also done. This is to get to help children and parents to identify their feelings, interrupt disturbing thoughts, cognitive coping and processing, uh, where in relationship between thoughts, feelings, and behavior have been explored. Trauma narrative also being done, where in the story of the traumatic event and its sequeling and exposure and mastery of the trauma, where we review with the child or the, with the patient how to deal situations that are reminders of the trauma and how to maintain control over the distressing event. Um, 
Also a conjoint child and parent session is easily done wherein the child and parents share understanding of the process of the therapy. And enhancing free child safety wherein we focus on the changes made in the family to ensure safety of the child. For the social aspect of this patient, I plan to refer this to WDSWD since this is since the patient, I guess for the Can you yes, go sir. back to your previous slide, please? <clears throat> yung, no, yung trauma focus. <coughs> yung gay and you. Okay, so psychoeducation, how will you do that? Uh, we explain to the patient for doc the, the, the symptoms that he experiencing. Kunari, when, uh, like, for example, the case of my patient, um, when he sees, um, uh, homosexual individuals for the he tends to avoid because magkakaroon daw siya ng naga naga na usahay naga there is trembling sensation yung mga ganun po doc so we explain why he has this thing yung difficulty of sleeping niya bakit meron so we explain it we say educate the patient because when they are informed when patients are informed, they become empowered for the so Okay, so you will you will explain the biologic aspect of what is happening to him, explaining the symptoms. What else? Um the aside from explaining the symptoms, um we also teach them how to cope up with this. Give them, uh, please talk specifically about the patient. Kasi kanya -kanya man siya. We cannot generalize our therapy. So on this case, aside from explaining the symptomatology, what else should you do in psychoeducation? Um, the importance of medication is also being okay. Your, your treatment, your treatment. What else? The action of your escitalopram. How will it help yes. the patient? Okay. What else? The importance of uh, huh? Sorry. Uh, I'm waiting for the. Okay, so part of psychoeducation is to let the patient know your plans, your treatment plans, and then uh, ask about his thoughts or, or his thoughts, or you might want him to clarify with you about certain treatment plans that you might have. Remember this patient initially had PTSD from experience, sad experiences and then develop into a uh, depressive disorder. So there's feelings of hopelessness, there's a uh, wish to die. Uh, just a comment also in your history. The patient, yung pagsabi niya, ma, uh, yung about mamatay na lang siya, ana -ana, uh, it was interpreted as suicidality, but it's not actually thoughts of wanting to commit suicide, but wish to die, thoughts of death. Later na lang siya nagkaroon ng suicidality, but that is because of the long-standing uh, uh, PTSD that was not treated. But uh, yeah, in psychoeducation, you should be able to explain to the patient what is happening to him, why, and then treatment plans. So when you talk of treatment plans, you're actually giving uh, the patient hope that the patient can actually overcome the symptoms. So yung mga hala, meron pala, pwede pala. So yan yung psychoeducation. I agree for a doc. Um, so we let also, um, we let, uh, we asked the patient what is his understanding about the, the treatment for the and the reason, we explain the reasons why these, these treatments are being done. 
So the, uh, you ask the patient to explain or you explain to the patient? Um, sometimes for the, um, if they have, we ask also for their, for their, ano, but, um, maybe they have ano, also um, idea. Uh, what ano, ibig sabihin na ano? Anyway, anyway um, uh, Mekong, we're taking too much time on psychoeducation alone. So on your own, please, uh, please check and have this supervised by your supervisor. And then it, yeah, you had uh, parental skills, con conjoint child parent sessions. Uh, will you be able to do that in this case? Um, not yet, but doc, I'm planning to do that in the uh, next follow-up. Okay, which parent are you going to ask the, for? The, the, the pastor for the, who adopted the, 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 the patient. Okay, so the adoptive, uh, is, is uh, the pastor being seen by the patient as a father figure? Um, yes, for the. Uh, please you check that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all for thank this you, slide. So our goals for treatment for short term goals: control symptoms of depression, PTSD, restore patient functionality, provide safety environment of the patient, provide education to the patient and family. For the long term, long term goals, prevention of relapse and recurrence of depressive and PTSD symptoms, ancillary guidance in dealing with stressor, maximize his level of functionality and quality of life. So, of course, in the OPD laboratory, we're also requested to this patient. Um, for the first follow up, patient still with, uh, still with the problem is still with interrupted sleep, still has feeling of sadness has PTSD symptoms and had episode of decreased motivation. Um, the intervention done, we continue the present medication, advice to follow up liberal testing and supportive therapy was rendered to the patient. For the second follow up, still with uh, patient have improved sleep, but still had still had but in, uh, episodes, less, na, less frequency of, ano na po, on the second follow up, less frequency of interrupted sleep. Still has feeling of sadness, but with lesser frequency also, and had episode of decreased motivation. Uh, advice to do for NPT, supportive therapy was rounded. And for the third follow-up, improved sleep, still has feeling of sadness, but lesser frequency. Um, so my plan was to do CBT. So that ends my report for the uh, Meko. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. Dr. Laganao, ikaw muna. Sorry, just to ano lang, uh, Mekong, no? um, at least uh, to learn more about your plans for treatment. Diba, you mentioned about the uh, learning theories and how uh, the PTSD symptoms uh, persist no? because of certain coping mechanisms by the patient, such as the avoidance. No? Uh, so, uh, this is what we call the avoidance anxiety cycle. Uh, how do you plan to treat this or to like manage it in this case? Um, I plan to refer this for the IDT for the. Ah, I refer the new saku. Okay, sige. But uh, on your end, naman, Meko. On my end, for the, um, I will, I will try to explain to him further why why he has this reaction for doc and he would have this mindfulness next uh, so that he will be able to gain uh, insight why he has this kind of behavior for okay maybe read more on that mekong because i think it would explain uh it would help your patient understand you know how his behavior can actually uh, no, uh, contribute you know, to the persistence of the PTSD symptoms, you know, the avoidance uh, behavior. So uh, read on it. Maybe we can discuss it more during supervision. Thank you for the no question. going back to my question earlier, um, how do you plan on uh, addressing the alleged abuse 
Um, I plan to refer this case to the DSWD for, uh, to our social social service vendor so that this so that um yung social service natin ang mag ano din mag release sa ating um ang tawag siya hmm uh, to the WCPU Apo, Apo, Apo. Um, how would you disclose that to the patient as well and how would that affect your therapeutic relationship with the patient um first um i would explain to him that trauma in children are are very rampant in our society and i would explain to him that most of the time ito yung ito yung ginagawa natin sa mga patient po so that he will have the idea po and also i'm planning to and i will explain to him that i'm planning to do that to him also what about the patient's choice in the matter um the autonomy of the patient for the um, so I think, how would you resolve that? And would it be therapeutic? That is, an, that is an ethical dilemma, Doc, but I think um the 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 yung mag override dapat yung ating ano doc na na mabigyan siya ng justice. Uh, the justice principle of justice mm -hmm. can override. <laughs> Ah, uh, read on that muna, Meko. Comment na lang, additional <laughs> na. Sige, ano. Doc. Sige, Doc, Betty. Uh -oh. Help na lang, Doc. Uh -oh. One way talaga is to, ano, di ba? You have to engage the patient. Oh, And then, yeah. if you have a good therapeutic alliance with the patient, then you can engage him, then educate him about all his rights. So, di ba, sabi mo, pag alam niya, you can empower him. When you give him knowledge, so you have to, ano, uh, in your in the process of therapy you have to engage him educate him about all his rights and then uh that i know and then you have to work out with him that he is not alone that there are people who could help him because that's the reason why he went into depression because he felt hopeless no so that he is not alone that uh <clears throat> there are other ano, parang people around him that could really help him so it's it's something that you have to work on no? then agree because this is a reportable case he's he's underage also he's 17 years old so this is a highly reportable case and you have to be working with wcpu can i say something uh uh, tapos na po kayo, Doc Betty. Yes, yes. So, uh, I do agree that this is a reportable case. No, I think that's where, kasi in the law naman, it's clear no, uh, that if you see child abuse, you should report. But uh, I think this is where our decision parang making comes in. No, When you think about it, this patient is already living with uh, his pastor whom he has a good relationship with. Now, Considering that if we report this case, for example, if we report this case, for example, what might happen? No, uh, DSWD might decide that okay, the pastor is not a relative, no, and they might insist that he can only be living with a relative as a minor. Uh, or they could insist that he lives with his dad. No, uh, sometimes they do have techniques such as educating the dad or engaging the dad or the relatives. Uh, into certain treatments so that the patient can live with him or them again. So I think that's one of the dilemma, Mekong, that you might want to uh, think about, you know, because uh, what might happen? You know, uh, where, where, which choice would the patient be safer in, right, if you really report this case? So um, I think you... Uh, might think about what Dr. Benigna said. No, engage the patient, discuss with him first. No, uh, tell him that it is your obligation to report. But if you do, there could be certain consequences for that. No, engage the pastor as well. 
And uh, if you can, engage other family members, those who are supportive of him, such as the aunt, the ba? The other aunt <clears throat> who Papa. actually reported the, the abusive aunt and the grandmother. No? So uh, my point is, it's not that simple, uh, especially in these cases, to just say, we will report this, we will not report this. Because there are a lot of consequences both ways. So yeah, that's something uh, you might want to think about. Thank you. Okay, in addition, it is mandated by law to report. No, it is mandated to report. And then uh, you have to balance no, where you are as a therapist and a reporter also. So you need to have a strong working alliance with the family. You need to be really communicating with a social worker. Because uh -oh. that's, that's also part. You have to educate also. You really have to work with a social worker. Because as Dr. Uh, Laga now said, they might be, uh, di ba, parang, they, ano, giving him, uh, they might give him back no, to his home. So you have to really educate uh -oh, a strong working, and actually you, you can work with a WCPU social workers because they, they know what to do. Uh -oh. This is a good case that you can follow through. Dr. Padilla, I think, also has additional comments with regards to that. Yes, Dom? I think Dr. Betty was already able to uh, mention what I want to say. But uh, yes, I agree that we can actually tap WCPU because I don't know, Betty, is this still correct? This, this is a one-stop shop where there's this uh, representative from the police. So women and children's desk, social worker, and lawyer. legal. Yes, doc. Okay, so if that's the case, uh, given the challenges and given your resources, Mekong, they, they, they have a plan on what to, how to address the challenges that you will encounter. I doc, before he answers, we are part of the WCPU family. Don't forget that, Mekong. Thank you for the insight. Input for the... Anuman, Mekong. Um, would it be best if you hold a conference with all the stakeholders of WCPU so that your fear, the fear of the patient being brought to back to the family will not happen. You, your recommendation will be of great help because as, you, as you've seen in the history, family was not able to take good care of the patient and it is only under the care of the pastor that the patient was able to feel a little better, although there's difficulty in overcoming the trauma and the depressive episodes because and it was the pastor who initiated treatment, seeking treatment for this patient. So you can actually recommend who is the best person to take custody or guardianship for this patient. Tama ba ako? Uh, why do you need to do that? Um... To, to alleviate the patient's um, condition. And uh, what do you mean validate? Adopt. I don't validate. Sorry. Alleviate the condition. Okay, diba, this these feelings of helplessness will magawa. Diba? So, yung, uh, is the feelings of helplessness being partially addressed by taking action on the people that has abused him? Come again, Doc. Will the feelings of helplessness be partially addressed? by taking action against those people who had abused him? Um, 
for, for me, doc, yes, it will, it will, it will for doc. Okay, so, okay, so taking action okay. is actually also therapeutic in nature. So make sure that you do that and make sure that you prevent uh, future trauma when the patient needs to deal with uh, the social worker, baka nga yung totoo na isa uli siya, yung mga ganyan. So uh, it is your responsibility to make the patient feel safe. Kasi yan yung isang okay. issue niya, safety. Okay, may I ask, uh, is the patient comfortable with you? Um, yes, I, I, I actually asked the, the, the patient for a doc regarding that matter. Then um, he said, yeah, okay lang naman po a doc. Okay, so we have also, built rapport na. He also, also gave a doc. Have you built rapport na? A doc. Um, I also I also give him options, doc, that I can. Yang pwede ko siyang ibigay sa ibang therapist kung hindi siya comfortable sa akin. But he opted man to stay with me for doc. Okay, so very good that you were able to to build rapport and the patient was able to trust you. That's the actually the first step. So actually, in this case, you have a lot of things to do. <laughs> For him, non pharmacologically. Okay, that's uh, thank you. Thank you for comment. Lang then, my home, no. So, so you have you have to remember, no, if this is a reportable case and then you're scared or worried or concerned about uh, having breaking a therapeutic alliance, you remember you have two roles, no, it's either you be a therapist or a part of the evaluator, no, if. About, uh, parang, uh, yeah, so you have to uh, take your side. You need to give comfort on the part of your patient. Uh, and I believe at this point, you're, you're, you're serving as the ther therapist, no? not as a forensic uh, evaluator at this point. Mm -mm. But you need to consider all factors because in 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 reporting so you have you can actually work with uh wcpu and another uh resident who could i know and then you have to guide him gracefully how he can face all of his i know questioning so that will be your role so that he will not be traumatized for that input for no that for Do we have additional comments or clarifications? Thank you to the consultants for all your inputs. So yun kasi Megong, that was what I was uh, looking for that you would um, assess kung ano yung, um, what is therapeutic for, for the patient with regards to the case or you know, the possible case that, that could arise. No, So think about all of those and uh, study on that and also undergo supervision parent, okay? So if there are no more questions or clarifications for everyone, please, uh, for the consultants, please make sure to fill up the evaluation form of Dr. Yambao for the clerks, um, new, uh, clerks and interns, you may be excused. Um, Dr. Padilla, for now, Dr. Padilla will be um, uh, also showing us some slides and teaching us on um, question formulation so the residents and the consultants may stay. Doc Padilla will have a few minutes break. Wait, Five minutes. Uh, is Dr. Yambao done with the presentation? Uh, yes, yes, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> may, may additional okay, questions the word about Dr. Yambao? Uh, none for me. Okay, Doc. <laughs> Um, so if there are no more additional questions or clarification regarding the case for the clerks and interns, you may be excused. Five-minute break, Doc Padilla. Uh, okay, uh, can Dr. Nueva already 